Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. Okay, so th is this at 5.5 at Hustler? So this is 5.5, but it wasn't at Hustler. I played um, I, I played uh, the tournament. They had a 200000 guarantee at the bike because of Legends, and okay. so I just played the 5.5 five afterwards. So I have a pretty much God image. Um, I'm up a lot of money. Uh, this is probably three hours into my cash game session. Basically, anything that I have, I've been making a lot of money on, but I've also been fairly active because I've had some pretty good hands. So okay. I have pocket kings, and uh, there's an early position raiser. He's kind of fishy. Um Another guy called, and then I actually make a fairly large uh, three bet from the button. So the, the standard raise has been $30 on a straddle, mm -hmm. and I make it uh, 110 which is a little bit bigger than I normally would in position, but these guys, they didn't really want to fold. So, so I figured I'd just So you're playing 5-5-10. Five, five, it's a straddled pot, and the guy opens to yep. 30, call, and, uh -huh. you may, and you make it 110 Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So the funny as it is, the straddler is the one who calls me, and everyone else folds. So the, the straddler str seems. The straddler, the straddler cold calls. Straddler cold yeah, calls. Str okay. Straddler cold calls, and he seems like he was a pretty decent player. I mean, like you know, I've never really played with this guy before, but. You know, if I'm giving my opinion, I think that he's seemed more solid than the other two. And the flop came uh, jack high. So it's like jack, three, four, rainbow. So there's no flush draw. There's only a couple straight draws. Um, he checks, and I make a continuation bet. And this one, I make it fairly standard size. So I, I've made it like... Um, I think it was like 90. I wanted to keep it under 100 bucks, you know. And he calls. And queens. Turn is a queen. And this is the spot where I'm saying to myself, okay, this guy is not fishy like I thought some of the others. Certainly jacks are in his range. Queen jack is in his range. So I was thinking to myself, if I if I bet here, am I really going to get called by worth? Uh, worth? But if I check here, maybe I can get some value on the river. So, so, so um, you're, you're the uh, – and you guys started with 1K stacks, right? Well, yeah, I have them well covered. Right. So but we just assume it's $1,000, yeah. Right. So the pot – here you bet super small on the uh, on the I mean not super small I mean you bet ninety on the flop which is which is fine it's a very dry, dry board and you don't actually need to bet all that much to get a lot of money in here too because of the bloated nature of this right I mean it's in essence right it's five five ten so you're playing one k cap so it's almost like a like a hundred bb three bet pot spot um, mm -hmm. so the pot's four seventy here on the turn the turn is a queen he checks and then. So you're saying that you sort of want to kind of feign weakness because if you bet again, the pairs are going to fold out, right? I'm assuming, right? Like sevens, eights, nines, tens, something like that. Is that what you're thinking? Draw. What's yeah, that? Certainly. Well, certainly there are, there are a few straight draws that are in there. Mm -hmm. And there's also, um, you know, as far as value hands, he has that he probably would check raise me on the turn. Um, and I thought that based on kind of like my stereotype of the guy, that if all the draws missed, he might actually try to. Uh, I don't see a ton of draws here, though. Like, I don't really see any draws that I'm really all that concerned about or trying to extract value from, right? Because, I mean, look at how narrow, unless he's crazy. Now, you said in the beginning of the call that he seemed somewhat reasonable, but unless he's crazy, he, uh, I, you know, he's not going to cold call you with like five, six or ace five or ace deuce. And, you know, you've got two of the kings in your hand that block king 10, and that's not really going to be a call all that much on the flop anyway. So it, it's a super stretch that any straight draws really are relevant here. Now, when you're playing at a higher level 
and you deal with small sizing, sometimes you're going to have a guy like take off on the flop with like say nine, 10 of clubs on a Jack three, four board, like three to a straight flush. I don't really see that in five, five. So I'm not exactly sure how relevant the straight draws are. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, you know, I was just kind of going through my thought process, Mm -hmm. but, uh, um, so I, I checked the turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, the river came um, uh, six, so it's three, four, six, uh, queen, jack, again, rainbow, and he doesn't think for very long, and then he bets three hundred and fifty dollars. So there's no real flush draws at all, right? No, jack, there were no flush yeah. draws. There wasn't even a backdoor flush draw. Right. So jack three, four, no. queen, and then he bets three what? Three fifty. Um, it's a pretty large bet. So, yeah, so I mean, this um, is that's quite a polarizing bet, right? Like, you're not going to see somebody like bet with ace queen in the spot for 350. So, I would imagine that this is air or he has a set, basically. I mean, I get I don't even know if these guys, I mean, how often do you see a guy cold call? Remember, in a straddled pot, and you play a lot more 5 5 than I do, Wendy, but just something that I noticed at the hustler and the bike, too. And it's something that I've talked about in a lot of my training material that people tend to play like a little bit less aggressive in straddle pots. They understand that it's bigger, like the size is bigger. So for somebody to call 110 cold with queen jack suited out of the straddle is very unlikely because someone's not, they're not computing the hand like, oh, it's a 3x open and then somebody, you know, 3.5x'd it you know, in position as a three bet. And a lot of times queen jack suited is not a cold call there anyways. But what I'm saying is, is that they're looking at it like, oh, this is a three bet to 110. We're playing five, five, even though it's a straddle. So I don't even think he's got queen jack here. So it's really representing like he's got pocket jacks, pocket queens, or he doesn't have anything unless he's just, maybe you didn't know that he was, you know, like a lunatic or something like that. I mean, that's sort of what my read would be on the situation. Yeah, he definitely was not a lunatic. Well, anyways, you know, my whole plan, of course, was to feign weakness mm-hmm. and then hero. So I, I pretty much snap called him, and and he said eight high. <laughs> so he must have called me with a suited connector and floated. I think. I mean, it's the only thing that I can imagine. And the, the funny thing, the reason why I wanted to sort of use this as an example is because. I've been doing this a lot lately, and both Mark uh, squished my tomato, and then Chad was even at the uh, table um, uh, playing with me, and he even sent me a text message going like, oh, my God, no one ever tries to bluff me like that. And and it's weird because I hadn't really thought about it that much earlier this year, but I wonder if this is kind of like the flip side to me being the tight white girl with glasses, which is if I bet I'm preventing somebody basically from trying to bluff me because I'm feigning too much strength. But I can use my hand reading skills to basically feign weakness on certain textures and then like snap them off on the river when they overestimate their fold equity. I I, I don't know. I mean, I've, well, I see I'm, where I mean, you're, it seems I see, to be happening in practice. But. I see where you're going with it, and whether it was an intentional or non-intentional, this spot that you have here is actually, I'm not going to say it's standard, but when you look at the ranges, I, I think I like a check back there on the turn a lot anyways, even if you're not thinking about feigning weakness, just be, just looking at how ranges fit in in three-bet pots. I mean, it's jack-3-4, the turn's a queen, you've got kings. If you're going to get him to fold out all <clears throat> pairs like nines and tens, and then he's got jacks and queens in his range, it's not a bad spot to check kings. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100. Click on the link right there.